Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? It's Dakota Vishman here, and today we're going to talk about five tips for rally leading and basically doing anything on the wonders. Um, so, to start off with, every rally lead that I know of is about $6,000 in the hole. Uh, <laughs> and I say that there are some people out there that's starting out right now, and it doesn't apply to them, but most of the people down the road, okay... The most efficient rally leads that are out there in the game, okay, have already spent $11,000 on one, two, or three heroes at a time. <laughs> they have Mythic Champion gear, and they maxed all of that stuff out. But the bare minimum, I think, for most rally leads is that they're going to need to have 400% or higher in one attack stat. And then what they ultimately work their way up to is 800%, okay? That's when you have, like, all Mythic gear and you're not using Champion Okay, <laughs> it does take a while to get to. The next thing is they probably need to have the Wonder Research completed. Um, now that in itself is like about a grand or so. Um, but I will say that if you buy packs like Massive Discounts, you can pay five bucks and get 250 Archaic Tomes. It takes roughly three to 4,000 Tomes, I think, just to get through it. It takes a while. Like I went through quite a few Tomes. Um, now to be exact, I really don't know the exact number, but I knew it took a lot. Like, it could have been as high as 6,000 tomes. I really don't remember. But at 5 bucks a pop, it makes it considerably cheaper. And so for those of you out there that are wanting to be a rally lead, that is really kind of where you want to go. Um, of course, if you get heroes like Cursed Hunter, Don Guapo, and Snail Princess, you can tack on another 200,000 to your wonder. Uh, so basically, for each hero, there's at least 600,000 more that you can add on top of that. Plus, if you get the castle skin... Um, there's one castle skin in particular that I'm thinking of that is a lion castle skin, which gives you like another 50,000. But to get that upgraded, it's like a grand. Or it's like two to three hundred. Can be like up to six hundred dollars roughly just to get the thing all the way maxed out. I say that because you have to get star scrolls and star scrolls kind of vary depending on what you can get away with. Because if you get it like on a 50% roll, it might be cheaper. But it, it's very, really like, how do you say RNG based? If we're just going off the 100% guaranteed, it's at least. $400 on the minimum. And so I just say that for those of you out there that are doing that, that's really a top tier stuff. It's really hard to get that extra 50000 Is it worth it? I don't know. Really, I don't think it is. But uh, what is worth it is the travel speed that you get out of it for the Wonders. Now, of course, you know, as I've already said, you know, these are pretty much my general tips for the number one tip. <laughs> now, the next tip, okay, is I want to say you want to have your pack for familiars, and I want to say you want to work on getting uh, Mecha Trojan, because Mecha Trojan will give you 125,000 that you can tack on on top of it. Uh, obviously, a 50% army boost will give you 375k as a you know starting point with another 125k. That's obviously a lot more, but obviously you need to get them all the way maxed out. 18 cores on the bare minimum is 7,500 gems times 18, which is a lot. But if you do hell events and get chaos cores or go into the kingdom tycoon and get uh, and get chaos cores, it's not so bad. It takes a little while, but you can get them for considerably cheaper than gemming them. Um, but what I will say about level four pack familiars is that you want to get all your damage based increasing familiars. So like Nosros will give you cav damage. Like there's a ton of familiars in there. I'm not going to name them all, but basically you want to get all the damage increasing familiars if you can. Okay, that's going to help you out considerably, regardless of whether or not you're rally leading or not, but that's really helpful. Um, the next tip is obviously whether or not you want to get into Sigil's research. Sigil's research is good, I think, um, but it is obviously one of those things that, yes, it takes a lot of tomes. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of cash, I think, to really get through Sigil's. Um, it's just like the familiar research. It's expensive. It takes a lot of time and a lot of money to really get down there. Um, I can say for a fact that, like, once you get to Helmet and you actually get the pack attack, it, the benefit of that is that as you are picking up these, you know, sigils, you got various different sigils. There are, like, one pack for 20 bucks that'll give you, like, a variety of different infantry attack bonuses and wonder travel bonuses. And the neat thing about those pack attack bonuses is that you can then, they transfer regardless of whether or not you're the rally leader or not. So, like, if you join someone else's rally, they'll get those bonuses. And so it, it's kind of nice to have uh, the social research if you're just wanting to help your guild in general. But 
the main thing with the sigils is just kind of like the castle skins. Do you really need it? Probably not. It, it, it'll help in like those little itty bitty micrometer differences if you're like, you know, the same type on type. But for a vast majority of people, I really don't think you're going to need to stress yourself. You can get the 10% or so plus into stats if you want to, but that, I really don't think most people will really care. It's really, I think, the five familiar slots that are super powerful. Uh, because what I'm saying with familiars is that if you can get the familiar research, I think that's a better investment. You'll get, instead of just three familiars on the base when you actually get it there, you can get up to five. And if you get five familiars, that is really powerful because depending on the familiars that you have access to, that's a 40% drop to HP three times plus maybe even some bonuses to your attack. Or it can be like if you get like Blackwing, Gargantua, and all these super pay to win familiars, then those are like even considerably better benefits. Now, obviously, in, in a grand scheme of things, obviously the best rally leads are people that have literally everything. <laughs> but literally, I don't know that many people that can afford that. Like, I think most general people are probably not at business level income spending, okay? But I'm just giving you a general consensus of what I think is worth and what is not worth as far as being a rally lead goes. Now, when you're rallying people, I know a lot of people that'll do a 60% tier 4 and 40% split on players. Now, if you're wondering what that is, just take 2,375,000 and multiply it by 0.6. That is 60% of the tier 4 that you need to send, and then 40% for tier 2. It's like 950,000 tier 2 if I, if I remember it, but don't count me on that. Check for yourself. I beg you. Now... Of course, you know, when you're sending on Wonders to defend, I recommend you use 125,000 even split when you send it with the 375k stack that you have. And then what you can do is just have people evenly blend that with tier 4. If you're just starting out and maybe you've got tier 3, then I really still recommend kind of the same idea. Because what you'll do is when you're defending, if you know somebody's going to send infantry, you can go and fill it up with cavalry and you'll counter. Um, but when you're defending, the main thing is that you want to try and counter what the guy's sending. Like, if you can defend in Cavalry Phalanx and he's sending infantry, that's ideal. Obviously, a two-type mix is a little bit better because that gives you a little bit of way on whether or not, you know, you want to go inf in range or cav in range or inf in range and vice versa, okay? So there's no harm in doing a two-type split, in which case just do 50% 375 and blend it two ways. Again... Nothing wrong with that. Um, but the main thing is that when you're defending, you want to try and do that. Um, I know for a fact that some advice I can give you, like, is that when you're doing, like, Baron and stuff like that, I know a lot of guys out there to, that I know of that are doing Baron, and what they do is they actually wait until they know a certain guy sends range every time. They'll scout the castle, or, you know, not the castle, but the, mm, the, the, you know, the wonder at the time, and they scout it, and they see what is he sending. Did he send Cav, and does he consistently send Cav? Well, then if, if that's the case, then just wait until he sends a rally and send range at him. And then as soon as that rally lands, you're going to probably kill Cav. Okay, and that's kind of the benefit. Obviously, it's a guess, but it's a pretty damn good guess if you do it over time. Like, you can guess predictably what someone's going to use. And that's something I've seen a lot of rally leads that are doing, that I know of, that are doing these mixed rallies, and they're doing double rallies, triple rallies on the same fort. And by the way, in case you're wondering, you know, I really do recommend that. Like, if you're going to do wonders and stuff like that, and you're hopping from base to forts, you know, like, it's pretty powerful if you've got, like, more than one guild helping you at a time. Like, if you got one guy sending range and another guy sending infantry then they have to do one or the other and if they're timed perfectly you're probably going to cap the damn fort one way or the other obviously with the guys that are like maximum stats though like i was telling you the reason why you would send an even blend is then you have the benefit of just having somebody reinforce and at split seconds <laughs> have the guy fill and reinforce fill and reinforce and you're always going to be able to swap and counter him. that's a really powerful thing to be able to do but Obviously, when you're wanting to capture and you know somebody's, like, primarily one type, then you can always counter with that. If he's, like, a two type, then you can pretty much send a one type mix and try to counter it. But I, for the most part, I usually send a one type when I'm hitting a fort. Uh, because most of the time, if I'm wearing cav gear, I don't want to make that aware to them by any means. I usually wait until, like, the rally lands, obviously. But in case you're wondering... 
the reason why people send a bunch of solos, okay, is so that what what they're doing, okay, is that like if you're on the fort and you're trying to defend and everybody around that fort starts sending one troop attacks at it, it becomes very difficult to determine whether or not the where the rally lit, like, you know, the lead is in there. And then if you start speeding it up, it just makes it even that more nervous nerve you know, nerve wracking for the defender. Like he's gotta he's gotta find your report to know when to counter. And if he can't do it in enough time, then he's screwed. And that is something that is incredibly powerful that I, I think almost any rally lead really needs to take use of. So make sure to have, you know, a timer uh, in case you're trying to do double rallies or you're just wanting to counter a certain guy. Uh, in case you're wondering what a timer is, it's just basically somebody in the guild sends a siege from a very far distance. And then that guy is basically going to go out and uh, wait and, and while... A rally is about to land. You can kick out that destroyer and it'll start right away. And you have control over when it starts. It's a pretty powerful thing to have control over. Um, but the main thing, and this is applies to traps, applies to literally anything, okay, is you always want to stay in counter. If you can't stay in counter, right, and maybe you're sending one rally at a fort and the guy's got a too tight split, okay, the one thing you have to fear is that if somebody's infantry in range and they're very closely, evenly blended, it does not take a lot for that guy to go, well, if you're sending cavalry and I have range in my fort, then guess what happens if you think you're going to hit in phalanx? Chances are he's going to swap to range phalanx and you're going to get hit. So it is kind of a mixed bag when you're hitting forts like that. Now, I would say that really hitting forts in the best way possible would be to try and hit it like if it's in range, for example, I would send infantry because on the lucky hand that you happen to hit range, then you're going to win. If you hit infantry, it's not going to be so bad because it's a two, it's one type to one type. The same unit type is hitting each other. Okay, so that's ideal. Um, but then it becomes a question of whose gear is better, who has the right phalanx. Um, and, and sometimes even a two type split like infantry and cavalry doesn't hurt. Like if you're going inf wedge and you've got you know, cavalry up on the sides with those infantry, that's another really wise way to get around that because then it's also part of the front line. And again, you know, with these calf familiars that are out that increase attack stats and stuff like that, I think that's a really good way to get around it. Um, but these are basically my five general tips for rally leading. Um, of course, if you're going to be rallying on players, the general rule of thumb is don't let somebody scout and spam scouts on the same castle that you're trying to rally because you're going to wake them up. <laughs> I really recommend that if you're going to scout, have one guy scout and then he gets the report and then he sends that report out to everybody else. Otherwise, you wind up scouting that guy a bunch of times. And if you don't make that a rule in your guild, you're going to have a lot of people that just wake up in the midway of the rally and you're going to screw it up. So don't do that. Uh, but... Obviously, communication is key. Uh, whether you're doing Dragon Arena, whether or not you're doing you know Wonder Wars, or if you're doing KBK, obviously communication is key. Um, you know, I hope you guys have fun, and hopefully you'll check out my other videos. I'll see you guys next time.